Hey guys, how you doing? I got Pastor Paul. How you doing, Pastor Paul? Sorry about that, man. Let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> do it there, brother. How about you? I'm doing alright. I'm doing all right. But you know what? Uh, so a friend of our, well, a uh, friend of ours sent us a, a video on on uh, a sup, uh, like some gold dust and supernatural stuff that happened up in Reading, and I thought it'd be kind of a good topic to to talk about quick, and see what your feedback about there and and um, the world of what you think about this whole thing. I know for a while <clears throat> there was a some sightings on gold dust and gems from heaven and feathers flying from from the air and stuff and people have been writing blogs and a whole bunch of stuff my question is god's uh i guess the topic is god's hot spots and what i mean by that is is um you know certain areas you'll hear stories like for example i heard a pastor tell me this stuff and this is not my words folks this is what this pastor said and he mentioned like uh you know up in readings they've got healings and supernatural gold dust and manifestations happening uh uh stuff like that but then in up in um <clears throat> kansas city and ihop um, they haven't had much results on healing or supernatural stuff happening and, and they pray 24 hours they fast and so forth and got ready and they've got all these supernatural things happening why is that happening why why does reading have all these things happening and and kansas city not happening or, or wherever your spots are and this is this is what he said again i didn't say this stuff he said it and it kind of brought up a subject on that and uh there is i guess there is hot spots in different parts in the world like uh Florida, Florida is another spot too, where where they had Todd Bentley and they had a lot of healings and stuff, and they had the Ron, Ronnie Howard Brown thing that happened with with miracles, and then and then they have Argentina where they had um, some miracles that happened on that. But anyways, this is what happened recently. A friend of mine just sent this video on this of an actual service. It was a conference that they had. It's called the Open Heaven Conference up in Reddings, up in the Bethel Church. And uh, this is, yeah, this is this is what they said, and this is, I believe, uh, this uh, this week when it happened. So you'll folks see it right here. Well, anyways, uh, just for, for you people, what was happening was during a worship service or a service conference called the Open Open Heaven Conference. I hope I'm saying this right. And right in the middle of it, there was this cloud that happened. And uh, all of a sudden, it was gold dust falling down. And you can see part of it in the film, in the video, that little, they look like uh, tinsels, like little um, tinsels happening. So my question is, why does certain places like at Reading having all these manifestations of healing and gold dust stuff like that and, and parts of Orange County not? Uh, places like in Kansas City uh, is not having much of a manifestation. And, you know, I mean, the difference on those is that they both love the Lord and uh, they both pray a lot and stuff. So why is that? I just want to know what you think. What do you think, Pastor Paul? I mean, Paul? There could be different reasons why, I and mean, one of the reasons that comes to mind is, uh, is it God's agenda that one church is searching, or is it their agenda that they're searching? Mm. And if it's man's agenda that they're searching, then I think 
the Holy Spirit would be hesitant on showing up. Hmm. Because the Spirit is not being able to move the way it wants to. Hmm. That's good. Now, if, if everybody's in one accord, and everybody's worshiping and has their eyes on God, then I, I believe that you'll see those signs and wonders that, you, that you're talking about. Hmm. I hear you. It's a hard one to call because you could say, well, gee, I've been praying for years and years and years and years, you know, right. for the revival to come down. But, you know, have you ever thought that maybe when you're praying for revival, the revival is coming, but it's coming in a different place? Yeah. Because God says he's no respecter of people. Right. So because we right. move over here at a certain place, doesn't mean, well, when you snap your fingers... And you go like that, but God's going to show up. Right. God don't show up like that. Right. Right. God shows up the way He wants to. Right. Right. And I think we got to understand that sometimes is that because God doesn't show up here doesn't mean He's not there with you. Right. Right. I know there's a lot of times where uh, the Lord has not showed up at a certain place, but He showed up in my own heart, and He mm. showed up in my own life at right. that moment. But he hasn't showed up with everybody else at the same moment. Me and you, you and I have been to a place, and we won't mention names. We walked in the place, and we were thinking the Shabbat would come there, and right. the Spirit would come fall. And when it, we didn't see it, and then we started praying, and not that we're super special or anything, but we both felt that Shabbat come down upon us, that Spirit of God. Right. Right. That Spirit came down on us strong, and we. we, we with, with, with contain ourselves. Right. Right. So I think the Lord does come. He comes in different ways and different forms. Mm. And I then think it's better to you know, be neat to have a whole congregation be on fire and everything. I think it's just as intimate when God shows up individually. Mm. I think uh, what, what my uh, what my brother uh, Paul is saying is um, <clears throat> the anointing. For so many people who don't know what the Shabbat is, it's the anointing, or so many people into the Shubi. I have a, another person, Tom, that's into the Shubi. But but it's basically the presence of God when it comes real thick and you can feel it and it knocks you over. That's what he's talking about. And, you know, there, there's, a, there's a lot of nice people out there that loves the Lord. And I guess the question is, is also... You can go to why? Why does God choose Israel? Why can't He choose maybe, um, you know, like China or Japan or or Mexico? You know, why does He pick Israel? And um, you know, it's like the scripture says that uh, the potter cannot say to the the, I mean, the clay cannot say to the potter, you know, why did you make me this way? You know, you can't say that. And um, so that's what I'm calling about hot spots, you know. Maybe there are hot spots in your place. Maybe it's publicized more. I don't know. But I, I want to know what what you people think about that. Definitely. What you got, my brother? I don't. I don't would be interested in see and and there's anybody out there that has a different name for for the Holy Spirit beside Shubi or Shab. Yeah. If you could email us and let us know what your what the term trying to express. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. I I know for a fact that uh, um, Paul Paul has actually experienced angels encounters, and so I have seen angels. I've seen angels around, but then there's some people who uh, don't see that. I know I've had mics. I mean, guitar stands that melted, and uh, supernatural things that we can't understand why that happened. And it's the same thing with gold, gold dust, too. Some people are having miraculous things of gold dust, you know. And maybe you people out there who have the gold dust stuff, uh, let us know um, what is it. You know, is it your certain thing you're praying or believing for or what? Or is it, um, I don't know. But um, that's one thing. It's always a question. You know, maybe it could be dry spots, but I know, I know prophecy for sure, saying that uh, these supernatural encounters are going to happen in revival, meaning there's going to be more multiples on that stuff like that. 
But uh, let us know what you think, people, on that. What you got, Paul? I'm looking for a scripture I had to do before the Lord showed up. I'm looking, I'm trying to look, I guess maybe I'd find it in uh, in um, Revelations mm -hmm. regarding how God would show up. Like, I know he shows up in heaven in different ways, and, but I haven't really found anything. Maybe you have something that the Lord would put on your on your heart or your spirit as to... Um, how the Lord would show up. Well, I know, I know the. There's several ways that the Lord shows up. He says that He comes in a cloud, and there's actually some people have had experiences where they've seen the cloud, you know, during a worship service, and I mean a thick cloud, you know, where where it's in the middle of nowhere, and um, He says that He comes in a cloud, and then. Um, there's another one where he comes in as far as uh, fire. It says that children of Israel saw it in the fire. They say cloud by day, fire by night. And then also uh, um, signs, you know, signs from heaven. Well, you know, I think one of the things, uh, uh, one of the things that kind of intrigues, makes me think is uh, I, the Lord sometimes has angels as like the wind. Hmm. And then fire like servants of God. The servants of God are like fire. Hmm. And what I mean by that is the angels of wind. It's like you're at a certain place and you'll all of a sudden you'll feel this wind come up for no reason. And and let's say you're praising God or you're spending time with God and you feel that little breeze come upon you. Hmm. But I think sometimes that's the Lord just kind of reassuring you, hey, I'm there. I'm there with you. And then that fire of the servants reminds me of when we, when we do worship, brother. Uh -huh. And that fire comes upon us in our, in our, in our stomachs, in our, in our bellies. And it rises up through our hands and through our mouths and through our, and our head. Or we feel like, um, like somebody touching the top of our head. Uh -huh. Like a tickle. Right. Like a like a like a little bit of air touching the top of your head. Hmm. I mean, I feel that a lot of times at the church, I'll feel like the, the angels of the Lord coming around me, and I'll feel like I'll literally just touch the side of my my face or my neck or the top of my head or my fingers. I'll feel it in my fingers out of nowhere on the tits. And you know, it's just weird how the Lord looks like that. Or if you're really into the spirit. That, and you go to lay hands on somebody. Remember, brother, when you laid hands on it, like your hand is on fire? Right. And that's supposed to be like healing that the Lord's releasing through you. Hmm. You're never doing any of this stuff. It's the Holy Spirit. Constantly. Right. Exactly. So the Spirit of God comes and goes. It's the Spirit of God is like, when it comes and goes as it pleases. And that's what we got to remember, whether it be at Bethel, whether it be at Kansas City, whether it be at the church that we attend. The spirit comes and flows wherever it wants. I myself, you know what I enjoy. I enjoy when they when you, if it was be like you, if you were playing music, and then you knew when to stop and you'd stop because you wanted to wait for the spirit to come down, mm. and you would keep quiet until it finished doing what it had to do. Then you'd break back into worship. And I think that's special that, to, that, that a lot of people need to do. Is they got to give the Holy Spirit time to to do what it needs to do to touch people's hearts. We're a generation, we're a microwave a generation. We That's want right. Them. We got to have them a second ago. That's right. That's not how the Holy Spirit works. The Holy Spirit says, no, wait on me. Wait on me. The Lord's saying, wait on me. God's saying, wait on me. And I think we need to do more of that. If we want to see the manifestations of God and the Spirit and all the gifts and wonders and all that stuff, I think we got to wait for the Holy Spirit to come and not rush it. Tell me what just happened. I don't think that we have to play the next song after the next song after the next song to make it come. Hmm. Sometimes we just, just stay in that Spirit and pull back. I mean, that's how I feel. Maybe others don't feel like it. No, I would rather just play song after song after song. That's great. But I, I experience God more when there's a call. That's right.
you know, there, there's also another theory that people think that it's um also from faith, and I guess when people come together, you know, another thought could be, I mean, I just want to know what your thoughts are, and people out there, is that, you know, like people come in faith, you know, people expecting to see the gold dust or the healings, and they come together, when believers come together and have faith on it, maybe God releases those things. I don't know. Uh, I know Jesus, in, in one point where he was healing the person, and then he took him out of the, it says that he took him out of the town because he could not do the healing there. So he took him out of the town, and then he did the healing. And then there was another instance where he was healing a girl, uh, supposedly died, and everybody, all the all the people around him was crying that the daughter was dead. And then he kicked them all out except for the parents there. And he prayed healing, and that person was healed. So I don't know if that's part of it, too, or what, but uh, I know... I think that could be when those people, the people were there in that one room mm -hmm. with the parents and that girl. I think they, they have one belief of their faith. And they probably had some incubants on them at the same time. Yeah. And the Lord says, no, you people got to leave now. Mm -hmm. Because I need I need my full presence here and I don't need nothing interrupting me now. Because mm. the parents have faith, I have faith, and she's going to heal. Because I know whenever Jesus did anything, whenever he healed somebody, right. he he looked to the Father. He waited for the Father to anoint him so he could touch that person. That's right. He says, I'll go, I'll, I'll go where you want me to go, I'll say what you want me to say, and I'll do what you want me to do. So the whole time he was depending on the Father to work through him to heal people. Even though, even though he had the power already, he always deferred to the Father first. He would always speak to the Father that, you know, save these people, not for my will, but your will. In other words, bring these people in here. Right. Because right. I know these are the people that you want. And I mean, it's probably not the same words, but uh, you get the gist of what I'm talking about, is that the, the Lord Jesus never did anything unless he de deferred with the Father. And I know in his spirit, he would pray to God as he's looking at that person, he's laying hands on it. He says, well, Lord, what do you want me to do next? And then the Lord would download to him right then, this is what I want you to do. I believe, I believe Jesus always depended on the Father. And I believe the Lord Jesus wants us to depend on the Father the same way. Amen. Whoa. You know, also, folks, I, I just wanted, if, if you people are having those gold dust experience in gels, let us know, too. We want to come. <laughs> we want to come to that shower, right, brother? <laughs> we believe in that stuff, you know. Now, this is not, I'm not saying I'm mocking gold dust or, or these things, because I've actually had experience on a supernatural stuff as well but i'm just saying why does certain churches experience these things and why certain churches don't and uh you know um, that's a question that uh, that's, a, that's a good question that's something to really discuss you know and people give us give us an, yeah, an email let us know what you feel because i think this is kind of a pretty cool topic mm. and even our local people that live in our area Give us an email and let us know what you feel, too. Yeah, let us know yeah. why. Why do you why? think these things well, are happening? Sure stand up. Yes, let yeah. us know why. What do you oh, think? Speak up. Speak up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh. You know, it, it's it's yeah. um, amazing what when you. Have you... To... Well, this is, well, um, uh, <clears throat> I guess, a miracles that are happening yeah. and and uh, yeah. all over the basically world, certain oh, things. Sure. A lot of it is, is from, uh, I guess, in uh, Argentina and um, I guess in certain parts of China and then again Bethel, you know, and um, certain places that are experiencing, you know, of 
Bibles, Bibles uh, being soaked with, with like oil, you know. I think, I think we need to take a trip up to Bethel. Yeah. yeah. We'll do a full report on that. If we did, we could bring up the video. Yeah. Yeah. And let our, let our uh, friends see it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Because we wouldn't jive, you guys. We'll tell you straight. Jive, huh? Yeah. Not, not that anybody's jiving. I'm just saying we tell you straight, you know, exactly what we see you be seeing. That's right. That's right. You know, the, another yeah. thing is also yeah. we had for a while Jothra, Josh, uh, Joshua Mills and a lot of experiences on, on the gold dust there. Uh, you know, we I've been in meetings uh, where with um, Patricia King and stuff like that. And, and we've been in... A, some meetings were supposedly uh, prophetic people and, and stuff and, you know, s excuse the punt, but we didn't feel nothing, you know. But uh, not to say that they're having a bad day or anything like that, but uh, we don't know. I mean, but then there's times where we were in a meeting, me, me and Paul, we were in a meeting, so-called prophetic meeting, and uh, there were, it was tons of people. <clears throat> we didn't feel anything. But then when we okay. were praying together with uh, another buddy of mine, we felt it very strong. And so, why does these things happen? You know, what do you think, folks? Is it is it just hype, or is it marketing, or is it just... What do you think? You know, I know what I think. I know, I know God, you know, uh, it's a question. It's like a question, like, you know, why did God choose Israel? Because he wanted to. Why did he choose Bethel? I guess because he wanted to. Why did he choose Todd Benley to do all those healings? I guess he wanted to. You know, um, I don't know. Oh, brother. You know, the Lord moves in mysterious ways, and that's an old cliche, but he does. He does. He moves in in such, he doesn't move like man. He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. And that's not to say that whenever we pray or whatever we're doing, we're not doing a God. But he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Whenever you try to put God in that box, hmm. he just destroys that box completely. Yeah, destroy that box, Lord. He Jeez. tears down the corners. Amen. And he's able to do whatever he wants to. What is this? Uh, this is diamonds or rubies? Yeah, these 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 are, these, these, these are uh, gems and diamonds that supposedly fell from heaven and people found, you know, and they have a collection of it, you know. Wow. I've never really experienced anything like that. I've never seen actual diamonds or stuff like that. So, but people I have. wonder if people out there think they have to be special to receive all that kind yeah. of stuff. What are your What are your thoughts on that, everybody out there? Yes. You have to think that you're really special to get all kinds of stuff like that. Hmm. You know, I think God is no respecter of people. He'll do whoever He wants to. Rich, poor, in between, black, white, polka dot, red, yellow, whatever. He don't care. I mean, you know, it's just whatever He feels like doing. Hmm. And this for Him is, He says His His floors are paved with their gold. He walks on them. Mm. I mean, that's like it's like we walk on a floor here outside on the cement. That's how it is to him. Oh, nothing. It's oh well, yeah, okay, well, okay, big deal. It's just a floor. Amen. You know? Mm. you know what always amazes me, brother, is the way you put the, the universe together and every living thing, every plant, and the human heart. The little baby that's in the womb of its mother. How he's able to knit a little baby and make it to a human being hmm. from dust to something. That's that's what, you know, it's, it just always amazes me. I'm always in awe when I think how he made bugs and plants and the water and the air and all those things that he does. It just it's just so awesome that he does those things and how his mind could even think like that. Hmm. I mean, ours is, you know, puny and tiny compared to anything with him. He's just beyond, 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 beyond. Amen. I mean, he made himself. Amen. Whoa. <laughs> he is the king. He is the king of the kings. Amen. He's the Lord of the Lords. 
He's the almighty God. Oh. He always says, I am that I am. Oh. That is so perfect when he says that. I am <laughs> that I am. That's what he told Moses. Oh. <laughs> I am that I am. Oh, yes, Lord. <laughs> Well, we, we pray for you people. We pray if you want a supernatural encounter. Yeah, we you know. pray for you right yes, now. Yes, we pray. We we want it too, Lord. <laughs> Lord we, we ask for that super encounter. Yes, that Lord. super, uh, not a super encounter, that special intimacy yes. meeting Amen. that we all want of you, Lord. Yes, God. We anticipate when you come up. We're looking forward to whatever you want to show up. She cut up. Yes, Lord. Lord. If you want to do it now, bring it now. If you want to do it 10 minutes later from oh. now, that's fine. Yeah. If you want to do it tomorrow, that's fine. If you want to do it the, a month from now, that's fine. Whatever you feel like oh. showing up, Lord, just show up. Yes, Lord. But Lord, we anticipate what you do because it's just so awesome, Daddy. Yes. It's so awesome the way you do things. Oh. And we just, you know, we just go, whoa. Yes. So, whoa, just more, Lord. Just pour out whatever you have. More of you and less of us. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And don't, and don't do it because we deserve it. And just do it because you want to do it. Yes, Because God. I think we've been doing that lately with a lot of people, Lord. I've seen mm. you do that. I've seen you heal people. I've seen you uh, touch hearts. I've seen you uh, break, oh. and op break open fences and walls that people oh. put up. Yes, I've seen Lord. you break all those things, Lord. And you didn't have to do that, but you did it because you just wanted to show people that you were there. Oh, that yes, you Lord. cared. Oh. Bless you, Lord. She cut up. Bless you, Lord. Oh. She cut up. Oh. Pour it out, Lord. Father, we just want to say a special prayer for Israel right now. Yes, Lord. Father, I ask that you bless Israel. I ask that you bless Israel. That uh, there's a, a man out there that uh, in, in Israel has a, a he's an independent contractor and he deals in sales. And Father, I ask yes. that you bless them. That you bring more sales and more and more contacts into yes. his life. That he will take care of his family. And Father, I just ask that 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 older man out there that's looking for. Companion that you yes, bless him, yes, and companion Lord. to his life. And Father, we ask that you help all the poor people that are living in Israel right oh, now. They're yes, on the streets, yes. the little kids, the, the old ladies, the, the, the old men that are they're, they're, they're handing out their hands for, for looking for anything to eat, a place to stay. Father, I just ask that you help them and you give them a place to eat, or something to eat, and a place to stay. Yes. And Father, I ask that you bless Israel's crops, their government, their weather, their water. Their, their, their infrastructure, Lord. I ask that you bless their politics. Yes. I ask that you bless their finances. Yes. I ask that you just bless Israel from the crown of their head to the soles of their heart, that you'd heal bodies, that you'd heal bodies, minds, hearts, limbs, uh, stomachs, legs, feet, ears, eyes, nose, uh, brain tumors. I just release off of these people right now. I just break any curses off of them. And I ask that you bless Israel, Lord, that you bless them, to put a hedge of angels around their country and keep off their enemies. I mean, every enemy that would come against Israel, Lord, in the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, I pour it out right now. Yes, Lord. You know, that's one thing the Lord's been showing me. He says, whenever you speak my blood over things, it works wonders. Oh. It works. You need to use that word. I pour the blood of Jesus on whatever oh. you're going through. Because I pour the blood of Jesus on my day. I pour the blood of Jesus on my wife. Oh. I pour the blood of Jesus on my husband. I pour the blood of Jesus on my kids. Yes, I pour the blood of Jesus on my job. I pour the blood of Jesus yes. on my finances. Whatever it is, oh. pour the blood of Jesus before you get started. Oh. See if your baby can go better. Yes, Lord. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Oh. oh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Lord, we just desire, Father God, your will, Lord. And as my brother's praying, Lord, we do pray, Father God, for Israel, Lord, because you love Israel, Lord. And um, <clears throat> we bless it, Lord. We bless it, Lord Jesus. And we say, Lord Jesus, your will be done, Lord. Your will be done there, Father God. Oh. Your will be done, Father God. Yes, Lord. No matter what, your will be done, Father God. 
that's all that matters, Lord, when it's all said and done. Yes, Father. I know God. we ham and cry about this and that, Lord, but you know what, Lord? We make it a lot easier on ourselves if we just said, Lord, your will, not ours. Yes, Father God. Because then everything that you wanted for us will come to pass. Yes, Lord. Everything, every perfect thing. We think things are perfect this way and that way, but you know what? Lord, you're a lot smarter than us. You know exactly what needs to be done. Oh. So just take over, Lord. Yes, God. Just take over. Yes, God. She cut up on that. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. Oh, Lord. Have mercy on your people. Oh. Have mercy on your people. Yes, Father God. She cut up on Oh. Mm. I see a young man right now out of Texas, Browns, Brownsville, Texas. Your name is Arnie. The Lord says he's healing you right now. He sees your tears, and he's catching every tear in this bottle that he has. And he says, I'm storing up your tears for heaven. I see where you're hurting, and I'm going to heal you. He says he knows that you're lonely, but he's going to take care of it for you. He says he's never left you. He's always been there for you. So heal Arnie, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Heal him. There's oh. another woman in uh, Ohio. Cincinnati, Ohio. And her name is Meredith. And the Lord's going to heal your left elbow. You have, a, um, I don't know, something happened to your left elbow. And he says he wants you to put your hand on your left elbow right now. And you're going to feel heat. You're going to feel heat in that elbow. It's going to go through your shoulder, come back down to your elbow, go back up to your shoulder, and come back into your hand as you're laying hands on yourself. And the Lord says, "Just let, I'm doing the work. Just put your hand there. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. So he wants to heal you. Father, thank you for healing Arnie and Meredith right now. Yes, God. In Jesus' name. Mm. Mm. She got it. Well, we bless your name, Lord, and we, we yes, ask Lord. your will be done, Father God. Yes, Lord. And, Lord, we ask, Lord Jesus, Lord, that whatever you want to do, you do, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Mm. Have your way. Mm. How many brothers and sisters that we know of uh, in the area in our, where we're at, brother, that need a prayer at all? I just, Lord, put that in my heart. Told me to ask you. Mm. She covered. Can you think of anybody? Oh. oh. Are you asking me or are you? Yeah, I'm asking you. Oh, what about? Oh. Is there anybody that you know of that needs prayer right now that the in the, 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 you know, it, within your walk, <coughs> uh, in your meetings, or, or uh, a friend, or no, not not uh, that I know right now. But. Just, there's some. There, I think there's somebody at the church that has cancer. I forgot their name, but I, mm. I, I I pray this for everybody out there that has cancer and that's worried about throughout the world. I ask that the Lord break that spirit off yes, of you Lord. right now. Yes, Father that you God. Healed in the name of Jesus. Yes, that Lord. You and that you'd be under the blood of Jesus, and that the blood would soak every cell of that cancer and rebuke it in Jesus' name. Come out. Yes. He had no authority. Come out by the blood of Jesus. Every cancer kill you under the authority of Jesus. You shall line up. For man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And spirit of cancer, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and in him only you shall serve, for it is written. You shall serve the mighty God. 
In Jesus' name. Oh. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. I heal a sister. Um, it's a sister we both name, we both know, brother, and she has a lot of um, anxiety on her mind, and she's hurting all the time. She has a whole body hurts her. Father, I just lift her up to you right now, and I ask that you bless her. You'd bless her and you'd heal her from all the things of her past, that you'd rebuke any principality and power that came against her as a child, and that you would heal her totally now, Lord, that she would that she would come back with a good report and say, I was healed by the blood of Jesus. Father, please have mercy on her. Have mercy on her. In Jesus' name. Well, you guys, God bless you guys, and keep writing to us, and let us know how we can pray. Amen.